My name is Chad Nolt, Service Manager at Ventrac, and in this video we want to give you some tips to explain how you can keep your Ventrac equipment, snow equipment, working to its best. We all know that salt and snow can be very corrosive and, and take its toll on our uh, snow season equipment. Um, is there some kind of magic formula that can keep this from happening? Well, the answer is no, but there are some steps that we can do to help reduce the effects and extend the life of the piece of equipment. The key is to prepare each piece before that first snowflake falls or before you lay down that first grain of salt. So I'm going to give you four steps and we'll go look at four pieces of equipment and uh, with that we'll get started. The first thing we're going to do is wash the equipment off to get rid of any salt or dirt that's left on from the last season. Washing can be done with uh, a spray cleaner, soap and water and a pressure washer or even a bucket uh, with a soap and a scrub brush. Uh, main thing is you just want to get the product clean. After washing, allow the piece to dry completely. Uh, you can speed up the drying process by blowing it off with an air hose, uh, especially in some of the areas that might hold water. While the unit's drying off, this is a good time to go through and check, make sure all the functions are, are working correctly, uh, make sure your PTO will engage, check things like cutting edges, uh, skid shoes, belts, make sure they're not worn and they're ready to go for the next season. Next we want to apply dielectric grease to any terminals that might be exposed to salt and moisture. We're going to start here with a V-blade. On a straight blade you won't have any electrical connections, but on the V-blade we do to control the hydraulic angle of each blade wing. Uh, so I'm going to start here with the plug that goes into the tractor and just fill those terminals up with dielectric grease. And then down here on the uh, diverter valve, we'll have to unscrew that plug. And again, we just want to fill that area up with, with the grease. Try to keep those terminals from corroding and, uh, as best we can. And that should take care of the V-blade. On the broom, the only electrical connection you'd have is on the optional electronic actuator, which controls the speed of the bristle. Um, and that will also be an option on a, on a uh, snow blower. So on a snow blower, you, if you have that actuator to duck the uh, chute up and down, you'd also have this electronic connections to put some dielectric grease on. So again, we're going to do the plug that goes into the tractor. And also, here at the center of the hitch, there's a two-plug connection. So we want to put some grease in and clip that back together. That's all it is on the snowblower, again if you have the actuator, or on the broom. Now we want to look at the electrical connections on a tractor. Obviously on a tractor there's a lot of connections, so where should a guy start? I recommend starting from the outside and working in. Let's start here with a 12 volt auxiliary plug, which would be where we'd plug in our attachment features. Uh, again, just want to put some grease on those connections there. Next, uh, some units will have a rear 12 volt auxiliary, which would control like a rear salt spreader or something of that nature. Um, we want to go inside and coat those real good as well. After that, let's just stay here at the back. We'll flip the seat up and we'll look at the uh, battery terminals. Again, safety here. Um, so we'll take the negative cable off first. We'd want to clean that up real good. We'll put some dielectric grease on there so those terminals don't start to corrode. And we'll leave that off because next we want to do the positive terminal. Okay, next we'll want to do the uh, remainder of the terminals on the rear. We have our rear lights plugs here. Um, coat those a little bit. Some of these you'll have to remove the uh, nylon tie straps so you can access some of those. But again, this is just going to help if you've got a rear salt spreader, uh, do a heavy snow and salt removal. These areas are going to get coated eventually. This will help protect some of those terminals. All right, now we'll move up to the front half of the tractor. We want to start here around the fuse panel area. Um, this area is going to be a little hard to get to. Maybe you can put a little on your finger and do each fuse. The relays we should do. Again, for a homeowner this might be a little bit overkill, but for a commercial snow contractor it's going to be trailing this thing in an open trailer down the road. 
A lot of these areas will start to get corroded over time. Putting some dielectric grease in those terminals will keep that unit running and uh, may eliminate a, some downtime for you. Again, we've got relays in here, half second delay, glow plug timer. Those areas should be greased. From the fuse panel area under the dash, we want to move up to the engine connections. On the left side here, we'd have the starter. We have the alternator. Um, I'm just going to coat this. This looks really good. Just coat this to help try to keep out any corrosion. Down here in the starter, we have the start switch. This is a diesel unit. On a gas unit, we'd have a uh, ignition coils up here in the front, ignition module as well. Those would be good areas to coat as well. Now we're ready to start greasing the piece of equipment. Before we do that, I want to explain the two different types of grease points you'll encounter. One is a simple pivot point, such as a cylinder end uh, or a bushing pivot. And uh, it's, you can grease that as much as you'd like until you see grease or what have you. Uh, you won't damage that at all. The other is a sealed greasable bearing. And on a sealed greasable bearing, we only recommend two pumps of grease once every 50 hours. And the reason for that is because this bearing is actually sealed. You can see we've got a, a shield and a seal on that. Um, and if we over grease that or add too much grease at one time or too often, we can actually damage the sealing surface on that bearing, which is going to allow water or salt, moisture, what have you, to enter. So only two pumps of grease um, once every 50 hours. And that's in the manual. You'll, you'll notice that in the manual as well. On the V-blade, you'll want to have the wings angled forward so you can get to the grease, center grease cirques. Now there will be some V-blades out there that won't have these, but the later models do. There's one top, one on the bottom. And again, here you can grease until you see the grease. This is a shaft and a bushing setup. And then there's one on this side in the center. And then each end of the cylinder will have a grease circ as well. Again, you can grease those till you see grease coming if you want. And if you want, you could also flip this thing, the V blade up on its front if you wanted to get better access to those. On the broom, we've got uh, two grease circs here on the caster wheels. We'll make sure we can hit them with plenty of grease. So they stay free on the right side. And here on the left side, the uh, broom bristle pit bearing. And then the other two are underneath uh, on the cylinder. We'll need to flip the unit up to get to those. And actually the one you uh, cannot access without dropping down this here uh, hydraulic oil drum, but the main one you can. Get that one greased good. Here on the snowblower we only have greasable seal bearings, so like I mentioned before we only want to give it two pumps of grease once every 50 hours. There's two here on the uh, blower jack shaft. You have one on either side of the uh, snowblower auger. And again, these are sealed greasable bearings, two pumps every 50 hours. And then we'll have two on the uh, PTO drive auger uh, shaft. And we'll have to pick the unit up to get to that. Again, sealed greasable bearings. And that's it. There should be six greasable bearings on this snowblower. If you're wondering why I turned the tractor uh, off to the right, it's the most easy to get to as far as greasing the, the tractor. So we'll go through the grease points on this. We've got one again at each end of the cylinder. And also on the later models, the center belly bar has got a grease circ on either end. Then we've got one underneath this shield, that's our top pivot. And I'll take that shield off. Again, when the unit's turned, we can access this center pivot a lot easier. And this is not a sealed bearing per se, so we can give this quite a number of pumps 
Um, fill that area up a little bit. <coughs> no seal bearings on this tractor. Everything is just an open pivot. Once you see a little grease, that should be good. Here at the center. These are probably the two most important, these two bottom ones here at the center. There we got some grease coming. And to get the front two, the cylinder and the, and the bottom belly bar there, we'll have to crawl up underneath the tractor here. Or the easy, easiest would be to have the unit up on some blocks or, or a rack or something like this. I'm on the front cylinder right now. So it is accessible if you want to lay down on the floor there to get that. Next, we'll move around to the front side, up of the front hitch arms. And to get those, we'll want to raise the hitch arms all the way up so we can get our best access of those. If your equipment has the optional three-point, you'll have three grease circs on it. You'll have two at the top on the pivot points, and then one down lower on your cylinder. So three, three grease points on that.